I'm Becky Platt, I'm 50 years old. I've been in nursing for the best part of a quarter of a century. I've worked in several other humanitarian contexts, but Gaza was like nothing I've ever seen before, both in terms of healthcare need and in terms of just the whole humanitarian context, seeing homes and landscapes completely devastated and seeing just the absolute level of human suffering and need was absolutely mind-blowing. I was completely blown away by what I saw. I thought that I had been prepared for it by watching the news and looking at photos and so on. But nothing prepares you for what it's actually like. There were just decimated buildings all around me and rubble everywhere. And there were multiple children just hunting through the piles of rubbish, finding things to eat. One of the things that we really, really needed was stronger pain relief for children. We had paracetamol and ibuprofen, drugs that you might take for a headache, and we were using that to treat the pain of children who'd had their limbs blown off. One of the children that I met while I was there was a young lady. She's 13 years old. She was sheltering in her aunt's home and the house got bombed and she lost several of her brothers and she also lost her right leg. She had a big piece of shrapnel embedded in the left leg as well. And she was moved to the field hospital where I was working and she was in agony and she couldn't look at her stump and she couldn't touch it. It was just too distressing for her. When I was there, I saw multiple children who'd been injured in bomb blasts. Many of these children had lost one or more limbs and it just feels like your hands are tied when you can't do what you know that you could do easily at home or in another context. I think that's when it really hits you, it's just, it's just not fair. It's, it's not okay that we've got children with devastating injuries who don't have access to pain relief. One story that gave me hope while I was there was the first baby being born in the maternity field hospital. She was absolutely gorgeous um, and it brought a huge amount of joy to the whole of the field hospital. She was a, a great morale booster. I think we, we knew that the maternity hospital was very much needed because there's such a young population in Gaza and the multiple pregnant women who need to deliver. So we knew that it was a, a vital service. And her being born showed that we could do what we needed to do. Every day we drove past shelters where people had made some kind of home out of pieces of wood, maybe pieces of fabric, to just provide some kind of shelter. There's no floor, people are living on the dirt or the sand. Children don't have bed to sleep in. Most of them don't have a cover over them. Children don't have access to a reliable source of nutrition. The psychological distress that I witnessed among children and young people is like nothing I'd ever seen before. They need a huge amount of mental health support. These are children that have had their lives completely changed and life today is completely unrecognisable from what it was before. It's very easy when we watch the news to be just completely overwhelmed by the numbers. Remember that each one of those numbers is one person, maybe one child who's been forever changed by what's happened. And then multiply that one child by thousands. That's the work that needs to be done. 
Save the Children's doing a lot alongside other organisations to try to make things better. But there's so much more that needs to be done.